Hey, what's up, camera? Hey, what's up, man? Hey, we got a Pontiac Trans Am in here. Could you help me set up the uh, missing tube trigger wheel? Yeah, sure. Let's go out there and check it out. Good deal. Let's do it. It's on All this, right. man. All right. It's nice pretty car. nice, pretty nice uh, Firehawk. Alrighty. So let's uh, let's open the hood and see what we're working on. Good deal. Cameron, what's the first step to uh, adjusting this? Okay, so first thing is we're gonna go over here and uh, I'll just point out a couple of the parts and everything for you. Okay. So we have our damper down here. Okay. And then you can see this silver part right here is our pointer. Gotcha. And then the silver part on the very end of the trigger wheel with these little kind of holes drilled in it. Yep. And each one of those holes is a magnet. Gotcha. One of those magnets has been knocked out. Okay. And I'm gonna show you how to index all that stuff. So the first thing we need to do is actually take this engine and put it at top dead center. Top dead center? Let's yep. do it. So top dead center on this damper, some of them will say zero. Okay. This one says TDC. So there's no line on there that actually says zero degrees. It just says TDC. Sounds good. So let's line that up and then uh, we'll go from there. Sounds good, let's do it. So basically this wrench is gonna go on the crankshaft bolt, correct? Yes. Snake this down up in here. Okay. And we're gonna back the motor up a little bit. Okay. So now, let me pull this out of here. Now, if you look at our pointer right here that I showed you a little bit ago, okay, it shows TDC. So let's turn on our light so we can see a little bit better. See how the silver pointer is actually pointing at TDC? Yep. And right now you can actually see with the reflection, that's one of those magnets in there that I was telling you about. Nice, nice. Next, uh, we'll lift the car up in the air and I'll see if we can actually find out where that missing magnet is. Uh, I think we marked it with an X so I can show you which one's the missing one. Mm -hmm. Then we'll lower the car back down and I'll show you the next step after that. Perfect, sounds good. Okay. So Rashad, have you ever lifted a car with a hoist before? No, it's the first time. Okay, so what we do is once we get the car off the ground, we just give it a nice little shake here okay. just to make sure that it's stable. Good deal. That way when you're walking underneath it, you're confident that nothing bad's gonna happen. So That sounds a good plan. We just shook it. It didn't move around anywhere, no scary noises. Mm -hmm. So we'll go the rest of the way up. Nice. All righty. So this is the trigger wheel that I was showing you from underneath. Um, it's a little bit harder to see from the top, but this itself is the trigger wheel. This is the sensor. This is what the ECU cares about. This is what we're gonna be adjusting our index position off of. And this one right here with the X is the one that has a missing magnet. If you look at it from the angle I'm looking at it, you can actually see light come through the bottom of it, but this is the missing magnet. And then the degree marks that we were looking at earlier are right here along the damper. They go all the way around and there's lines for like every 10 degrees, every five degrees and so on. This is how we're actually setting up our angles and everything. So the crank index position is basically the reference point from where the ECU sees one of these magnets okay. with this sensor and how many degrees it is from top dead center. Gotcha. So that's why we put it at TDC first. That's always gonna be our zero point. Mm -hmm. We wanna make sure that we start from the same place every single time. So now matter, no matter how many times you try and set this up, no matter how many cars you do, if you start the same way every single time, it turns out the same way every single time. Gotcha, the same starting point. So what we wanna do is we want this one with the X on it to be the space above our crank trigger. Got it. So the one that we're gonna line up with this sensor right here is mm -hmm. the one just underneath this one with the X. Got it. That's gonna be our index position. Um, I like to set them up at 50 degrees. That's the most common angle that we use in the racing world. Okay. Um, just because it's an easy, even number to work with. Gotcha. Um, and then if you're ever gonna do a cam sync, which we will do a video on that later, or I'll show you how to do that later. Um, the process is exactly the same. Uh, this one has a cam sync that's inside of the engine, so mm -hmm. we can't really do any of that. You can't gotcha. really see it. Gotcha. So it's already set up. But mm -hmm. uh, since you put an aftermarket crank trigger on here, I'm gonna show you how to do just the crank trigger part today. Gotcha, sounds good. So let's uh, let's go ahead and lower this back down now that we've seen what it looks like and where everything is. Mm -hmm. um, and we're gonna put the engine at 50 degrees before top dead center. Before top dead center. And then we're gonna lift the car back up and make sure that the magnet that we want lines up with our sensor here. If not, then we can move this around. But I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, this one's gonna be pretty close. 
And then we'll make sure that our missing magnet is the next one just above that. Got it. Sounds good. All right. Okay, so now we already set it at TDC. You saw where all the magnets and everything are on the bottom. You saw where the pointer is, where our sensor is. Yep. So now what we have to do is we have to put the engine at 50 degrees before top dead center. Got it. So we're going to take the same wrench that we set it at TDC with, mm -hmm. and we're going to roll the engine backwards counterclockwise to 50 degrees before top dead center. Gotcha. And then we'll actually go underneath it again, just so I can show you everything. You can see it really good. And I'll show you how the magnet lines up and why we're lining it up that way. Just mm -hmm. one more time. Gotcha. And then we'll go through all the computer stuff that we need to do to set up the crank trigger. Um, and after that, we'll go ahead and get the timing light, hook everything up, try and start it, mm -hmm. and uh, check timing and finish all the other small stuff up. Good deal. Let's do it. Okay, so let me get this down in here again. And you can see the, the lines on the damper down here. Yep. So we're gonna go backwards with it. So there's 30, 40, 50. Okay. So now we are 50 degrees before top dead center. Perfect. So if you look at that pointer, you can see the at the very tip of it, it points right at the 50 right degree line on our damper. Good deal. So let's go back up and then I'll show you how everything kind of relines back up. Mm -hmm. I'll explain kind of again why we're lining it up a certain way so that way you can kind of get the idea of, of how the ECU thinks about it. And then we'll uh, lower it back down. We'll go get our laptop and do the stuff on the computer. Perfect, sounds good, let's do it. Okay, so now we put the engine at 50 degrees before top dead center. And you can see our X moved. Yep. This is the one that doesn't have a magnet in it. You can look and see the light the actually passes through it. It's an open hole. This is our sensor, again. This is what the ECU cares about. It's so a crank sensor. This is where we're telling the ECU when it sees the magnet that we're telling it the index is, mm -hmm. it says, okay, I just saw my index magnet. In 50 degrees, I have top dead center. Got it. Got That's it. how the timing on, on an aftermarket ECU works. It has to have a reference point to calculate everything before it happens. Gotcha. So, so Cameron, does it have to be 50 degrees? No, it doesn't have to be 50. It's just a common number that we use. Okay. You can use any number as long as it's larger than the amount of ignition timing that you ever plan to run okay. which is part of the reason i use 50 because there aren't very many engines out there that can run or handle near 50 degrees um, so 50 degrees seems to be an easy number for people to get to mm -hmm. it's most common it's an easy spot to see on your damper and it's almost always more than the amount of ignition timing that you're ever going to run good so deal good that's deal. the reason we choose that there are other engines out there that have larger index positions than that, and some that are less, like 40 degrees, some of them are 60, 70, wh wherever this ends up. But the same process that, you're, that we're doing here is what mm -hmm. you're gonna use to find that out. Sounds good. Okay, so this one, you can see the magnet here. This is actually where the trigger lines up, just how we wanted it, right? Mm -hmm. So we have the sensor lining up with a magnet, then the next one, clockwise and rotation from it is the one that's missing. Perfect. That's exactly what you want. That's how the ECU is going to start counting the, the magnets. So imagine it goes like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, mm -hmm. 11, reset, one, two, and it keeps going Perfect. on and on that way. So that Brilliant. basically is how the ECU has its home position or reference okay. on the crankshaft is by having a missing tooth. And it makes it so when you're using a fuel tech ECU, you can actually just have the cam sync there for mm -hmm. synchronizing while you're cranking. Okay. And then after it's done cranking and ran for 10 revolutions with the both of the cam and the crank sensor in the same spot, mm -hmm. so 50 degrees and whatever your cam sync is 10 times in a row. Gotcha. It will then shut the cam sync off and only use the crank trigger and memorize the position of the cam based off of where our index position is. Sounds good. So that makes it so you have a much more reliable triggering system. Mm -hmm because you don't have to have two sensors that are synchronizing with each other all the time. It just allows you to start it up, synchronize everything. It will run in sequential, fire one coil at a time, mm -hmm. and then only use one sensor to maintain that afterward. Gotcha, so that's the purpose of the cam sync. It's an automatic process that does it for you? The, the purpose of the missing tooth trigger wheel is to make it so that you don't have to depend on both sensors all the time. So if you, if you didn't have this missing magnet here or a missing tooth here, mm -hmm. It would have to see the crank index position and the cam sensor doing the same thing at the same position every single revolution. If one yeah. of them fails, 
the ECU gets upset. Got it. So when you have the missing tooth or missing magnet, it allows you to eliminate one of those variables and only have to worry about one and it makes it much more reliable, especially in a high performance environment. Got it, that sounds good. So what's our next step? Okay, so now, now that you've seen that 50 degrees, our, our magnet that we want lines up with the trigger, mm -hmm. our missing magnet is the next one clockwise degrees. from mm -hmm. it. Okay. We can now go lower the car back down and we'll grab the laptop mm -hmm. and I'll show you how to set up your index position of 50 degrees in the, in the laptop. And even though we did this really precisely, right? We used a degree wheel or actually the, the lines on your damper, yep. all that kind of stuff. That doesn't mean it's gonna be exactly 50 degrees or whatever uh, that is just by eyeballing it. Mm -hmm. So the next step, we're actually gonna take the computer and we're gonna tell it to lock the timing at a known number without any other compensations or anything at all. Cool. And then we're gonna check it with a timing light. When you check it with the timing light, if it's off a little bit because we're human, we just did this with our eyeballs, we're not using precision measuring mm -hmm. equipment, right? Mm -hmm. It may be a couple degrees plus or minus whatever we said. So if we lock this at 20 degrees, ignition timing, okay. and it shows 25, we need to compensate for that and adjust our index position mm -hmm. a couple degrees either way to make it so when the ECU asks for a certain timing number, mm -hmm. it's actually giving you that timing number and you're not actually giving it more or less timing than you thought it was supposed to have. Excellent, perfect, let's do it. All right, so let's lower it back down, grab the laptop and carry on. Sounds good. Okay, so now we have the software open. We read the tune from the ECU mm -hmm. and we need to go to where our crank index position is. Okay. So we're gonna go down to engine settings. Okay. Then what we're gonna go to is RPM signal. RPM signal. And we're gonna set up our crank trigger. So this is a Hall effect sensor. So we already have that one correct. Mm -hmm. Most Hall sensors run on a falling edge. So that's already correct. Got it. We already have this one set up as 12 minus one, but we have a huge list here of different kinds of triggers. So make sure that you choose the one that you're actually using. We have a 12 minus one on this, so I'm just gonna reselect that, mm -hmm. 12 minus one. And then our crank index position, we just saw that it was 50, right? Yep. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in 50 degrees here. Okay. And then what we'll do is we will write the ECU and we'll go ahead and grab the timing light and everything mm -hmm. and then try and start it up. Once we get it started, we're gonna click this little lightning bolt here that says ignition. Okay. And when you click that, this makes the ECU force your timing to be 20 degrees before top dead center or what it, it thinks is 20 degrees before gotcha. top dead center. This is our 50 degree index that we put in there just a second ago. Mm -hmm. And then we have our plus and our minus buttons. What this is gonna do is make it so you check your timing, it's gonna force the timing to be what the ECU thinks is 20, like I said. Uh -huh. Then you use a timing light, preferably one that doesn't have any dials or anything programmable on it, just okay. a really old school, simple, regular timing light. Got it. And on the damper with our pointer that I was showing you earlier, mm -hmm. it should show 20 degrees or really, really close to it. Okay. Most of the time, you're not gonna be that good. So you're gonna have to adjust this just a little bit, a couple degrees, gotcha. right? So what we'll do is we'll use our plus and our minus buttons here to move this index position around until our 20 degrees actually turns into 20 degrees physically on the, on, the, on the dampener. And then we'll click save. And that will lock our final index position into the software. Mm -hmm. And then no matter what you tell the ECU to do for ignition timing, you can tell it 30 degrees, 10 degrees, five degrees, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. It will reference. follow it and it will actually do what you're asking it to because it knows exactly where our crank index position is and Got where it. to reference everything from. Got it, excellent. All right, let's so let's it. go ahead and get the, the timing light and everything set up. And then uh, we'll go ahead, pull this screen back up. We'll crank it and see if we can get it to idle. Once it's idling and everything, we can shoot it with the timing light, make sure everything lines up exactly how we want it to, mm -hmm. and we'll adjust these. One quick note is the plus and the minus button are backwards to what you would think that this would normally be. So oh, okay, explain that. Plus button is retarding. Okay. Minus button is advancing. Wow, why is that? The reason behind that is this is the distance from top dead center, okay. right? So if you make this number smaller, it means you're making it closer to top dead center. So I that's see. advancing your timing. I see. And then if you hit the plus button, you make this number bigger. That means you're making it further, further. from top dead center and you're retarding your timing. Got it. So when you're adjusting this, usually it's a first startup. Cars never ran before. You're checking for leaks. You want to make sure everything is 
perfect, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna be kind of scrambling a little bit. Just take your time, make sure that you pay attention to plus button is retarding timing, minus it's button is advancing, advancing timing. timing. And it's usually it's a subtle adjustment. It doesn't take a lot. Gotcha. And once you get that locked in, click save, and you're we're good, good to, to go. go. Okay, let's get it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the power one. Mm -hmm. You can hook that to the back of the alternator. Good deal. And then the ground you can hook to the sh like the bolt on the strut tower. Chassis ground. Okay. This is the actual pickup that's gonna pick up the signal from the spark plug wire. Okay. And you can see it says plug with an arrow. Yep. That means this side has to actually go towards the spark plug. So gotcha. which spark plug do you put it on? And put it on number one. Number one. Okay. We're gonna hook it on here like this, make sure it's all the way on there. It's not like halfway falling off or something. Good deal. With the arrow facing towards the plug. Okay. And then here's our timing light right here. And when we crank this engine over, you're gonna start to see this blink. And it's gonna blink when you point it toward, towards the pointer there. Mm -hmm. You're actually gonna see how many degrees it's showing. It's probably gonna be really close to 50, probably within five degrees within or so. Degrees. So I'm gonna have you hold this and go ahead and look at that timing pointer. Perfect. And then when we start it up, I'm gonna just go sit in there and start this up really quick. Mm -hmm. um, let me know what the timing is. is. And then I will go on to the computer mm -hmm. and we'll adjust it from there, okay? Sounds good, let's do it. bit hard for everybody here while while the engine was running I'm mm -hmm. sure but you can see we set this at 50 degrees or what we thought was 50 right mm -hmm. that's not exactly 50 degrees I see so we did have to move it around a little bit I tried a little bit more tried a little bit less mm -hmm. until we found that happy spot okay. where when we told the ECU 20 degrees yep that it ended up at 20 degrees with our timing light right yep. so it ended up being 51.3 for our crank index position okay and this car actually has idle by timing turned on. So you saw when I click save, the idle and everything dropped from yeah. going from like 1400 RPMs down to a thousand or I so. I saw that. So when I clicked save, the idle by timing stuff turned on and it started moving the timing around to make the idle mm -hmm. at where I'm asking it to go. But with the timing locked, it was doing exactly what we said. So all right, you just set up your first 12 minus one. Wasn't too bad, right? No, not at all. Not all at all. the missing tooth trigger wheels are exactly the same process. So anytime you need to set one up, that's the whole process that you do pretty easy. Mm -hmm. And for everyone else, I'll see you next week with more tech videos.